Hi everyone, today I just want to bring you a quick video with a cool trick that you can use to vastly improve the quality of your inputs in Tekken, specifically when you want to press more than one button at the exact same time. Now there's been a lot of talk on this channel over the last couple of days about people using the bind function and the shoulder buttons of their PlayStation controller to bind simultaneous inputs and making them come out more consistently. Now this is a fine technique to use. I personally come from a time where we didn't have access to these functions and so I'm a little bit skeptical about getting too dependent on them myself because I think just in a way I'm afraid that at some point in the future the feature is going to go away and then my inputs were going to become sloppy. So what I want to show you is an example of what more experienced fighting game players use to ensure that these inputs come out nicely every time. It is known as button buffering and it is actually a very simple concept to wrap your head around once you've seen it a couple of times. Uh, so once we're done with that, I also want to show you an example of something that I'm going to refer to in this video as animation buffering. And basically what this is, is using the recovery frames of a certain move to sort of mask and uh, hide the uh, animation and the input of another move meaning that the second move can come up more quickly and that it can come up much more uh, unpredictably. Now if that sounds advanced, uh, let me just assure you that it is very easy once you've seen what it is I'm talking about. So right now I just want to jump over to the gameplay section of this video and I'm going to show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we're in game and we're ready to talk about button buffering. Uh, as you can see, I've just picked the Gigas and I've cleaned the screen up, removed the health bar and everything to make this a little bit more uh, easy to understand. And I've also added, as you can see near the bottom of the screen, uh, command history, meaning that as I do inputs like directional inputs and attacks, you can actually see what inputs I'm doing, which is going to make this uh, a lot more easy to understand. So. Basically what button buffering is, is using uh, a command, pressing that command down, uh, hence buffering it, and then you can use the buffered command as a part of another command. Uh, so what I mean, for example, is that almost every character, or I think every single character in the game, has access to a generic one throw. And a generic one throw is performed by pressing the one button at the and the three button at the exact same time, like so. So as you can see, if you look at my command history right now, I just input a 1 and a 3 at the exact same time, and I got my 1 throw. But if I mess the timing of this input up and I press the 1 button slightly before I press the 3 button, it's going to look like this. If you can look at my command history right now, what happened is uh, I got the 1 input because I pressed the 1 too early and I just got a normal 1, and then I got my 1 plus 3 because I pressed the uh, 3 button down too late in relation to the 1. And this obviously works the same way the other way around, so as you can see here, this time I pressed the 3 too early and then pressed the 1, meaning that I got a 3 and then a 1 plus 3. Uh, and that does not allow me to do my generic uh, 1 plus 3 uh, generic 1 throw. So, to make sure that I don't do this mess up where I accidentally press one button too early or too late, what I can do is I can buffer one of the inputs. So, the way this uh, looks is, say for example that I'm uh, running up on Asuka here, and what I feel like I want to do is I want to do a single jab, and then I want to go into a throw, which is a great strategy by the way. It's not a bad idea at all to set up generic throws with a, a single jab in Tekken. So, what I will do is I will press the one button uh, to do my single jab and what I've been doing since I did that jab right now is I'm holding the one button down constantly even now I'm pressing it which means that if I start moving around if you look at my command history every single command I do right now will be a something something plus one because I've buffered the one button and I'm holding it down it is automatically included in any input I do what this means is if I'm constantly holding the one button down, if I'm buffering it and then I just press the three button, I am going to get a one plus uh, three generic one throw guaranteed 100% of the time. It is literally impossible to mess up as long as I'm holding the one button down. I can just press three, add three, and I'm going to get this one throw and there are no risk for missed inputs at all. So that's a basic version of a button buffer. I'm 
pressing a one button to do a jab. I'm holding the one down, meaning that it's buffered and I can use it for any other input. I just add the three and I get my one plus three generic one throw. And this is just a super generic example that I wanted to bring up because it can be used on any character. So if you haven't used button buffering before, what I want you to do is choose your favorite character, go into practice mode, do a single one jab, hold it down and then just add three and watch the generic one throw come out and that'll give you an idea and sort of get a feel in your body for how a basic button buffer works. Now button buffering can be taken to slightly more advanced uh, uh, heights um, so for example one thing I'd like to show you uh, this is not something you need to worry about initially when you're learning about button buffering but uh, say for example that I do a 1-2 with Gigas like you saw right there, that's his normal like sort of jab string, but it's kind of slow and he's in the punching animation uh, of that attack for quite a while. Anytime during that animation, obviously if I press any other attacks, Gigas doesn't just stop his punching attack animation and do the other move. You have to wait until that attack animation is over until you can do the next move. So if I do a 1-2 and now I'm just pressing 1, spamming 1 down like this, as you can see, I have to wait for the at entire attack animation of the 1-2 to end before I can start doing my uh, normal uh, one jab again. It takes time. I need time to recover and get back to my normal standing stance. What this means is any input uh, I do during this attack animation will be registered by the game and so can be buffered but does not uh, actually translate into Gigas doing an attack on screen. So what I mean for example is I can do a 1-2 and like you see if you look at my command history right now what I just did is I did a 1-2 and then during the attack animation of the 1-2 I pressed my 3 button. So a 3 kick did not come out because I was already in the middle of another attack animation and I can't just cancel that and go into another attack but the game still registered the fact that I pressed the 3 button and I've been holding the 3 button down since I pressed it, which means that the 3 button is now buffered, like this. And I can move around and now my 3 button is buffered, meaning if I go up to Asuka holding the, the 3 down the whole time and just press 1, again I'm going to get my 1 plus 3 generic 1 throw 100% consistently. So what I'm trying to say here is that you don't necessarily need to uh, use a 1 or a 3 when you want to do a buffered 1 plus 3 command. You can actually use, for example, a 1, 2 that doesn't have a 3 input in it anywhere to buffer a 3 like I did right here. Okay, so when you're in an attack animation you can actually buffer any kind of button you want. So if you're aware of what move you want to do after the attack that you're currently doing and that move happens to uh, include more than a single button, if you want to, you can actually buffer one of those buttons ensuring that your move is going to come out consistently uh, when uh, you do the next attack. So if that sounded a little bit a little bit complicated, I hope at least that the example that I showed you uh, made it uh, you know illustrated it well enough that it made sense. But like I said, go into practice mode and just practice doing a single one jab into a generic one throw, and you will sort of uh, get that kind of aha experience where you uh, sort of uh, realize how this works mechanically. So I'm going to cut the video once right here, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what I called animation cancelling in the introduction of this video. Okay, so the final thing I want to show you guys is something that is going to be super useful if you happen to be playing King, Gigas, Jack, or any other character that uses a lot of, uh, a lot of powerful throws or other attacks that require you to do a lot of button presses to get a single move out. So, the example with Gigas is going to be his uh, overkill throw. Let's actually go into the move list and show you uh, overkill quickly. <clears throat> so let's see, it's going to be down here somewhere. Uh, there we go, overkill. So. As you can see, the input for this move is a uh, half circle back, so forward, down, forward, down, down, back, back, and then at the very end, forward, one plus two, and that's going to get you your throw out. Now, that's a very long input, um, and that means that when you do that input, there is an extended period of, a period of time that you're essentially wasting. Uh, it might only be a fraction of a second, but as you know, in Tekken, fractions of seconds matter quite a bit. So. What you want to do is, similarly to how I showed you that I can do a 1-2, if you look at the command history, I did a 1-2, and then during the attack animation of the 1-2, I pressed my 3 button, and I'm holding my 3 button down, meaning I have a buffered 3 right now. You can actually do an attack, 
and during the animation of that attack you can do your entire half circle back and when the attack animation ends you just add forward 1 plus 2 at the end and that's going to cause the overkill throw to come out as soon as the previous attack ends meaning that you've uh, buffered and essentially wasted zero time during the entire uh, half circle back input so I'm going to try and illustrate for you how that will look now obviously I'm doing this on a uh, control pad and not an arcade stick and I'm much more accustomed to doing uh, circular motions on arcade stick so if it doesn't come out super crisp the first time I'm sorry but what I'm going to try and do is a 2-1 which is this generic sort of little jab string with you guys and then I'm going to do the uh, overkill um, input buffer during that animation so let's see if we can uh, pull it off here all right so what happened there was I did a 2-1 and during the 2-1, I was doing my entire half circle back, and then when the attack animation ended, I just pressed forward 1 plus 2, and I got my overkill out. One interesting thing that you can actually note is because uh, overkill ends in a forward 1 plus 2, so an input that uses more than one button, namely 1 and 2, I actually buffered uh, the uh, not only the entire half circle back of the throw, I actually buffered in because this 2-1 uh, string has a 1 at the end, I actually held down that 1 and buffered that as well. Uh, so if I see if I can do it one more time here, as you can see, I did a 2-1 and then you have a, an entire string of 1 inputs there, all up until I did the forward 1 plus 2, meaning I buffered my half circle back and then uh, I was holding down the 1 button the entire time I was doing the half circle back with the directional inputs with my left hand with my thumb and then all I had to do was press forward and 2 uh, with the right timing after the half circle back after the attack animation of the 2-1 ended and I got my overkill out uh, perfectly uh, on time and so that is going to be a lot harder for Asuka to deal with than if I was just standing in front of her and doing that throw because I do this move you know it hits meaning I have some plus frames she's on the defensive because obviously uh, you know I'm at plus frames so it's not her uh, turn to attack or anything she's probably just gonna stand there and block meaning that uh, my throw is gonna connect and then the question just becomes is she fast enough and good enough that she's able to actually break my throw and that's another skill to develop uh, altogether but that was just a quick uh, intro to button buffering and uh, the uh, input or animation buffering as I called it in this video of long inputs. I hope it was useful, I hope you liked it, I hope it made sense. For now, if you thought it sounded difficult, just try and go into practice mode and do uh, a single uh, one input, buffer it, add the three and watch your generic uh, one throw come out and that'll allow you to get a feel for how buffering works in this game. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you soon in the next video. I think we're gonna do a character tutorial next. Uh, and I haven't quite decided who I'm going to do, so let me know. I mean, obviously I want to do Gigas because I love him, but not a lot of people seem to care about him. So should I listen in my heart or should I listen to my subscribers? Uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.